Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. I wanted to put together a quick video to show you a great new update that the team has added to the 3D Floor Planner. And I wanted to make sure that you're aware of it and how to use it. So the feature that I'm talking about is our new structures library down here at the bottom of the right side panel. And the really cool thing about using this is that it basically allows you to take basic shapes and build out any sort of custom needs that you want to include within your designs. So there's a number of different ways that you could use this. Um, in this case, I actually used it to create all of my wood beams uh, for this design. So I can apply them to the ceiling, I can angle them, and I can apply any sort of wood finish that I want. Um, I also use them to include some wood trim around the room entrance here. So typically the room entrance would just be a very clean opening and no trim included. So this allows you to customize it a bit more and you can add in wood finishes or you could even add paint color to it. And you can even build out simple products like this. So you could create your own coffee tables, side tables. Uh, if you're looking to create just kind of simple furniture shapes, uh, because maybe you found something online and you can't quite find the exact thing that you're looking for within our product library, you might be able to build it out. So in today's video, I thought I would show you just a few ways that you can do that and give you a sense for what's possible with this new structure library. So why don't we jump in and I'll let's start with creating the wood beams because this is really handy. You might run into a number of designs where you want to include that. And with this new feature, you're going to be able to fully customize it with a variety of different wood textures or paints or whatever. So to create a wood beam, I would just click into the structures option and I would take this box shape, click that, click directly into the floor plan. And then what I could do from here is the right side panel is going to update to show me all of the properties that I can customize. So right here, you're going to see that you can change the shape. So if I wanted this to be like an eight by eight inch wood beam, I would add eight inches in width and in height. And I think I'm going to do something like, I don't know, like 145 uh, for the depth. And you can kind of gauge how, how long you want this particular wood beam to be. But once I've got that, the next thing that I can do is I can actually go down to the next option where it says structure material. And if I hover over this, I'll see a little pencil icon so I can click on that. And that's going to bring me into the texture library. So from here, I could go into any of these texture libraries, but I'll go into wood, wood texture. And then you're going to see that there's a number of options here that you can apply. And if you apply a wood finish and when it kind of is added to that shape, if that wood finish is doing this, where the wood grain is going vertically instead of horizontally, you'll also see that you have a texture rotation option. So you can turn this to 90 degrees and it's going to change up the way the wood grain is running along that wood beam. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is you can see that I've already got all these wood beams in place and I've got a specific wood stain that I have applied to them. So if I was creating a new wood beam and I wanted to use that exact same one, uh, whenever I click on the one that I want to edit, if I go into the structure material and click the edit icon, I could just pop into my recents. That will show me all of the textures that I've already used. So it makes it quick and easy for me to find that exact same one and apply it to that uh, new shape. And again, I'm just going to change the rotation of that so that the wood grain is going lengthwise here. So now that I've got that, let's go ahead and we're just going to delete this one and we'll replace it. So what I'm going to do here is if I want to line up my wood beam, for me, I find it's easiest to just pop into the floor plan mode and then I can go ahead and I can line this up and you'll notice these red guidelines are going to appear when you're moving around your shape. So they'll help you line up with any other shapes that you've already added. Now you can see that my uh, wood beam is quite long here. It's extending beyond the wall, but if you're going to be rotating wood beams on an angle, you will want to make them longer than you think they should be for the space because when you rotate it, it'll basically line up nicely with your walls. So if I go into the th uh, 3D perspective mode here, just to show you what I mean, let's take this and we're going to bring it maybe like halfway up the wall. So it's kind of sitting halfway into the ceiling here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use the tilt tool right here and I'm going to, let's try 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is a bit much, but if we use the arrows here, we can start to slide this down a little bit or rotate it back until we feel like it's in the right spot. And 38 actually looks pretty good there. So 
and I don't think I need to. I was going to say, if you need to adjust the distance from floor, you can do it right here. But I actually think that was pretty good and in line. So just like that. So you can add your wood beams on a sloped angle. You can match the angle of the ceiling and you also have the ability to customize it to any finish and you can do paint as well. Now, another thing that you can do here is let's just zoom into this space a little bit. If you were, let's go into our doors and I'll just go ahead and apply a new opening here. So typically when you add in an opening, it's just a clean opening. So you get whatever your wall finishes right up to the edge. But if you like the idea of being able to add some trim around that opening, you can use the new structure feature here to pull out another box shape. And I'll just drag this one out over here so you can see what I did. So in this case, we've, I basically just created this column of wood and I changed my dimensions of it here. So you can see that it's three inches in width, four inches in depth and 88 inches in height. So I basically created it so that in this case, my opening was at 85 inches and I wanted like a four inch trim up top. So I made this, well, actually I think it's a three inch trim up top. Yep, because it's 88. Uh, so you can make it whatever size you like. And then again, go into your floor plan mode and then you can grab that shape, bring it right down here. And in this case, I just kind of lined it up. I'm using my left, right and up, down arrows. I'm making sure that a portion of it is just on the inside of my door opening here. And I'm gonna line it up with the, um, with the uh, wall here basically. But I am gonna keep a little, bit, a little bit of it just sticking out so it looks like it's extending out into the space. So then if I go back into the 3D mode, you get something like this. And then you can have that wood trim color and you can customize it to whatever finish you like by using the structure material here. Now, another cool thing that you can do is you can make uh, actual products. So if you found a product online, but you know, you went into the product library here and you couldn't find something that's similar to it, you can actually try building out some of those uh, items using the structure uh, shapes here. So in this case, what I actually did is I grabbed a cylinder shape. So I'll click on that. I'm going to apply it. For the cylinder shape, I changed the diameter to 24 inches. I changed the height to five inches. And then this is gonna be my base. So I went into the structure material, I'm gonna go into the metal library, into brushed metals here. And I think I chose this one. So I've got my metal base here, and then I can go back out, grab another cylinder shape, add it. In this case, I'm gonna make the diameter 36 inches. Again, we'll make the height five, but you can make it whatever you like. And then again, back into the structure material. And this time I'll take the marble and just pick a specific finish. Now, if I wanna line these two up, what I can do here is I can go into the floor plan mode. And when I line them up, you're gonna see those uh, red guidelines appear. So it kind of snaps everything. So it's centered perfectly over top of each other. We'll go into the 3D perspective mode here. You can see the base of the metal and then the marble top sitting kind of right inside each other. So all I need to do is select the marble top and I'm gonna raise the distance from the floor five inches. Now what I can do is I can just click the base, hold down shift. If you were on a Mac, you would hold down command and then you would click the top and then that, that basically groups it together so I can move this item freely around the space without having to move the base and the top individually. So definitely pop into your Design Files account. Give this new feature a try because it can open up a world of possibilities with your 3D designs. Another cool thing that you could actually do with this is maybe you've got a particular uh, space that you're designing and it's got a central fireplace that sits in the middle of the room. So you would be able to use the uh, shapes to create your um, kind of brick or stone wall for the fireplace that's sitting right in the middle of the room. And then you can add mantles and fireplace inserts to really build it out. So there's a lot that you can do with this and we're excited to see how you experiment with it and what you can create. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, always feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching.